Welcome back to the channel. You're about ready to watch part one of our arcade cabinet rebuild. This is going to be part one of probably three. Part one is going to be building our cabinet. Part two is going to be wiring up the controls, probably finishing work of this of the cabinet. And part three will be configuring the PC, getting it to run the MAME emulators or RetroArch emulator to run vintage arcade games, Nintendo, Sega, all the video games you'd want to have on, on an arcade cabinet. So there's a couple of disclaimers I want to put, point out before I let you continue on watching this video, part one. One, I am not a carpenter. Uh, you'll see that in the in the video that I, I know how, I have the tools to get things done I know how to, I can follow four plans, but I am not, I'm not a car. There's different ways that you can, uh, there's different tools that you can have that I just don't have. There are different ways you can do things to make it easier. I, I, I just don't know. I am again, average Mike. I don't, you know, I, I'm doing this as if any other average person who wants to build a cabinet with their kids, I'm, I'm showing you that you can do it. Uh, it might not be perfect, might not look perfect. You can sure go ahead and go buy one. Uh, they are available. Probably I'll, I'll do a cost rundown at the end of the part three or, or part four, whatever it ends up being. I'll do a cost rundown and 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 show you how much it costs versus a, a unit that you can just buy pre-made, pre pre finished, all arcade games on it. You're only going to get vintage arcade games though. And but the the good thing about me doing it the way I'm doing it is that the kids can help. Uh gives them shows them that hard work can lead to cool things and, and getting things uh the way you want them and look makes you proud of what, what you accomplished and gets them off their butts and gets them moving to set in front of a video game cabinet. So one other thing I wanted to point out is that I ended up using a three-quarter sheet of plywood. <clears throat> uh, I don't know if it was the best plywood to use. Uh, there was an option to use MDF board in the plans uh, and actually I believe the plans, whoever made up the plans, ended up using, he said you could use both, but ended up using MDF board. I now in hindsight would have used MDF board only because the MDF board would have taken a little better to basically not stripping wood screws out. Uh, the plywood, going plywood to plywood, it, it, it just didn't allow for the screws to really tighten without stripping them out. And that's why you'll see that I had to use like little uh, cheater blocks or, or a couple of two by fours to, to kind of assist with making this cabinet sturdy. And uh, it, it, in the end, uh, I, th I think the console part I, I might end up redoing, but um, regardless, if you're doing this from scratch, learn from my mistakes, your MDF board is probably the best, unless you want the wood, which is what I was going for, you want the wood grain look of plywood, uh, you could do that on, I, I would do a mix at that point, do the, the cabinet pieces uh, plywood and then the console pieces not uh, MDF board so but anyways I'll let you watch the video I hope you enjoy it stay tuned for part two and part three and uh, I'll see you on the other side gonna be part one of our uh, arcade build here uh, just like I promised you guys what I got here is I got a full set of plans I found online I'll put some links down in the description um, like I said I think I said before we're gonna make a pedestal there you go. I'm gonna make a pedestal uh, arcade uh, with two two sets of controls and then we're just gonna hang a TV on the wall that way we can move it around or what have you. Um, 
I think for our basement is probably the best situation we can. And then we can also plug other things in the TV, like uh, the Nintendo Switch and stuff. So, um, so what we're gonna do is uh, mark out all the the uh, dimensions of all the side pieces and stuff on our wood, and then we'll, we'll get cutting. Alright, so these are my side pieces here. What I'm gonna do is add a tack strip about a half inch in from the edges from the side, the top. No, the top's gonna be even because the, the console's gonna sit on top. So the side, the back, this is the back, I'm sorry. The back, the front, and then we're gonna have a two by four frame on the bottom to hold the computer that's gonna sit inside here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. bottom of the cabinet the two by fours you'll see coming up uh, and then we're going to attach the sides the front bottom and then we're going to uh, put a uh, 116 slot for our uh, uh, t-molding going on the on the fronts and along the edges there all right so here we go
see that I finished my base over there. So the next step we're gonna do is on the front of these sideboards here before I fold everything together, I'm going to take a trim router. I actually just bought this at Harbor Freight. I think it was 40 bucks. Uh, and then it has, I also bought the slot uh, slot bits. You need a 1 inch slot bit to run along the center of this board. So ultimately this T-molding can fit right in the slot and it'll give it a nice finished edge instead of the plywood edge there. So we're gonna go ahead and use this to go through the center here. We're also gonna do it on the top console piece, but I'm not gonna do that right now until I know what I'm putting on the top as far as the design, whether it's gonna be uh, some kind of poster, plexiglass, or uh, a laminate uh, with a design on it. So it depends on the thickness of how far I wanna, I, I gotta get the, try to get the best I can with the molding in the center or at least in the top edge. So I'm gonna hold off on that. I'm just gonna do the front so that way we can take these, fold everything together, we'll have a, a base finished. Then we can go to the next step. If you didn't catch that in the video, as you can see here, I, I trashed I trashed this up pretty bad with the uh, stock cutter. So uh, what I'm going to end up doing is taking these off, recutting a new piece, try it again, and uh, go from there. So here we go.
right, I'm gonna end the video there. I would have liked to got you guys a view of the whole thing, but you're gonna stay tuned in the next video for that. Uh, make sure if you have not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, post notifications. If you liked the video, hit a thumbs up. If you did not, like thumbs down. If you have any comments, I don't, I don't mind some criticism. Uh, please let me know so I can better the channel, better my videos, and get more subscribers, and it helps everybody. So uh, stay tuned for the next video, uh, part two. But we'll probably be finishing the cabinet, uh, painting it, doing the controls. And don't forget, we are doing a giveaway. At, once we hit 100 subscribers, you can put yourself into the running for a free t-shirt or a raglan or, or long sleeve, whatever you want. Uh, you can pick the color, you can pick the, the color of the logo, it'll be an average mic logo. And uh, just to kind of help motivate people to subscribe, we hit 100 subscribers, I'll post out a video to, to kind of give the details of how you can enter yourself so stay tuned for that we're about halfway there we're at 50 I think right now so I know it seems small but you know baby steps we gotta get this thing going so all right catch you in the next one